uh, as, as society thinks of reservations, land set aside by the federal government, uh, there's, there's not that situation that takes place here in the state of Maryland. So when you talk about well, uh, you know, living conditions, uh, work environment, things of that nature, uh, you know, we saw in comparison to any other Marylander uh, that's here. Sometimes people have a stereotype uh, of, of how we live, how we dress, the way that we look, uh, all of these things. And once again, being a stereotype, mm -hmm. uh, a misbelief or something that's just not correct. Right, right. Yeah, mm -hmm. Native Americans look like every other kind of American. Well, I mean, in reference to, yeah. you know, what we just t talked about. Now, there are those physical characteristics, and I always tell people, don't get caught up in the physical characteristic of, of what you think a Native person should look like. Uh, for many of us, uh, the, the, I, we dress ourselves in the appropriate manner for where we're at. Uh, for the workplace or, or the situation that we're in. And you'll find that historically, yes, there were certain things that we would wear, there were certain ways that we would fix our hair in a traditional or cultural manner. Uh, but once again, being in, in mainstream society, I like to tell people we walk in two worlds every day. We walk in mainstream society and then we walk in our native world. And we are taught um, as much as possible by our elders, by our, our parents, by our grandparents, to be balanced in each one of those steps. Uh, and, and that's what's important. If we attend a powwow or a cultural event, Friday, Saturday, or Sunday, uh, we know that uh, we're returning right back to our jobs, our careers, or whatever situation be, Monday through Friday. But native, right. always. Right, right. Both, both identities. Yes. Both identities. Um, let's talk a little more about, about um, other characteristics of, of Native Americans in Maryland. I know that the, their median income is less than most Marylanders. That is true. Uh, you know, it's minorities of minorities, as we're uh, many times have uh, the statement's been said, not only by us, but of course by other people uh, in society here in the United States. It's unfortunate, uh, and yet we're looking to change that. That's another reason why the commission was put in place uh, in reference to education. Education meaning a, a gambit of situations. Uh, Indian education, uh, providing that, uh, something that's provided by the federal government in the school systems. We know that only one program exists, uh, and that's in Baltimore City uh, under Ashley Minner. And then it should, of course, exist in other areas of the state, but once, but as I said before, state recognized, federally recognized, self-identified, uh, it changes uh, the situation. And depending upon what group you follow in, uh, Indian education would be there. Uh, and if not, then of course, uh, unfortunately, uh, it, you can't apply for it or it's not in place as it should be. Mm, mm. So it makes a difference. And I know health, health indices, uh, Native Americans are uh, in, mm -hmm. in many, if not mm -hmm. most, um, sicker than, than most Americans. Well, we rank highest in health disparities across mm -hmm. the board. It, it, once again, unfortunate, but people have to remember something that didn't happen yesterday, didn't happen 10 years ago. It's, it's been a generational situation uh, from, from the beginning. And what I want to compliment the state of Maryland on, the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene, is how much they have really been uh, on point about assisting us in whatever way that they can uh, in various health disparity situations uh, with the cigarette restitution fund, uh, motor grants, uh, we're looking at situations where we've been asked to sit on committees uh, in reference to uh, events that are taking place not only here in the state but on a national level. So I commend them for doing so. Uh, I commend our commissioners for working very diligently on uh, the educational committee uh, and also other areas that you know that we're trying to focus on to let people know state recognition is a, is the priority. Yet there are many other situations that we're working on to increase the livelihood and the betterment for Indian people here in Maryland. That's great. So progress is being made. Definitely. Uh, we, we've remarked many times on American Indian Heritage Day here in the state of Maryland, which is a state holiday that uh, Governor O'Malley put in place, uh, signed an uh, executive order off in 2008. What day is that? Uh, that's actually the fourth Friday in November of each year. So, and, and a state holiday is something that you know, we, we really like to expound on, and we continuously each year try to do so, uh, not only through our activities on the commission, but through the uh, activities that are going on in the individual communities as well. So the fourth Friday of every November. Yes, sir. Is, is Indian Heritage Day. Yes, sir. Oh, that's wonderful. That's mm -hmm. wonderful. That alone should help Marylanders to get more aware of, of and I guess that's the major reason why it was enacted. Yes, uh, it, not only because American Indian Heritage Month is also uh, the month of November, right. but that day is set aside for American Indians here, right here in the state, to bring about more information, uh, more acknowledgement to the indigenous groups uh, that have lived here uh, before the 1700s and, and, and continue to be a part of uh, 
of this great society and this diverse, diverse state. Uh, uh, Governor O'Malley will say that diversity is our greatest strength and, and truly that and we just need to continue to let people know uh, about the diversity of its indigenous peoples. Yeah, 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 but well, that, that is true for every mm -hmm. subgroup because we tend to, for such a diverse society, Americans tend to think of everybody as homogeneous, that we're all kind of the same. Mm -hmm. And yes, we're all the same in many ways, mm -hmm. but we also bring to the table different skills and different, mm -hmm. different uh, uh, histories and mm -hmm. different, different uh, wonders. Mm -hmm. Well, I believe in using words that are, that are positive, uh, whether it be my own or someone else's. And when people use the term melting pot versus uh, a salad bowl, uh, and I think that we can all <laughs> hold on to our distinctive flavor and who we are and what we're about. This is why it's really important that people attend the cultural events for each of the Native American communities that are going on here in the state. For instance, you've got the Nasu Waywash, which will be having their cultural event coming up this weekend, Saturday and Sunday. You've got the Akahonic Tribe, uh, also an Eastern Shore Tribe, which will be promoting their event the third weekend in October. And that's a way that you get to see the people uh, right there involved in their cultural uh, aspects, involved in their traditions. Also, uh, they bring about the Pan-Indianism, which means that you know all Native people partaking in their activity, their, their, their powwow, as it's referred to. Uh, I like to refer to them as, as Native American gatherings because it's truly that, a gathering of our people. I was going to ask you because powwow is a word that, uh, after all, I was raised in the 50s and 60s when there were still the uh, Cowboys and Indians <laughs> movies. Right. and. Uh, Powwow meant something else back then. Right, it's gone through its terminology, yeah. it's gone through its name, and also spelling. When you say powwow, you know, traditionally it's an Algonquian word, P-A-U-W-A-U. -U. We know today it's spelled... W-A-U. Right, spelled P-O-W-W-O-W. Uh, and so even the, the, ch the changing of the spelling, uh, I think is on time for the simple fact that it has changed its meaning. Powwow originally meant, you know, an important person was going to speak and you saw Native people gathering together. So to an outsider, you would automatically think that powwow meant gathering of Indian people and actually it's 